Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We're here for episode number two of our new show, Kickstart Your Recovery. Alhamdulillah. This is Para. Uh, I am the uh, enrollment advisor at Purify Your Gaze, and I want to welcome everybody. I'm really excited, really excited for, um, for this episode, and I'll let you know this is probably going to be uh, my favorite topic uh, that we're going to cover. Um, this, is, this is a topic that I think is really transformational. Uh, if you really take in this idea, and what we're talking about today is always start with love. And we're going to talk about how being harsh with yourself, especially when you make mistakes, which is what a lot of people do, um, can actually make matters worse. And how if you're kind and gentle and compassionate with yourself, you're setting yourself up with the strongest foundation for lasting change. Again, welcoming everybody um, to our uh, to our second episode of the Kickstart Your Recovery show. Uh, hang, just hang tight as we um, as we give people a minute to uh, to tune in and uh, we get started with this show. Welcome, thank you. You know, thank you so much for uh, for being being here with me. I'm really, uh, alhamdulillah, happy and excited um, to have this opportunity to share. Inshallah, a positive message, an inspirational message, an uplifting message, and one that's also practical. And I want to remind everybody that you can always access the notes and the replays for this entire show, any episodes that we do at purifyyourgaze.com slash kickstart. Um, and I also want to share with everybody the reason why we're doing this. Um, and my hope... For this show, uh, my my intent, my objective for it is that it's available as a resource for people to tune in and hear an inspirational message and start implementing changes in their life right away. Um, so so it's it's just meant to be out there uh, for people to access. And because of that, I want to invite you as you're you know kind of watching today's show, just to uh, keep in mind if you can think of anybody who could benefit from this, anybody who's been struggling um, that, that you know of, that you could share this positive message with them, then I, I would really love, you know, if you just share this show that we're doing, this episode that we're doing today, inshallah. And my, um, my, my thing here is, is not telling me whether the video is, is on right. And so um, as much as I don't want to hold this off, but for these technical reasons, I'm going to have to just make sure that, that this thing is, that this thing is going, um, before, uh, before diving right into our, um, to our show for today, inshallah ta'ala. So let's just make sure that we're actually going. Okay. Bismillah. All right. Okay. All right. I see it. We're going. We're all set. Alhamdulillah. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, folks. And I want to let you know, by the way, that um, I can see your comments as they come in as well. So, um, you know, help me to feel like I'm not just talking to a computer and let me know that there's, you know, somebody there um, who's listening to this as we, as we move on. Share your thoughts, share your reflections in the comments. I'll see them. If you post a comment, I'll give you a shout out, inshallah ta'ala, um, to everybody who's watching us. Okay, our topic for today is always start with love. And we're going to talk about how it's important for someone who is looking to heal and establish a life of greater purity and integrity to start, underline, start from a place of self-love, self-compassion, and self-acceptance. And how, if you overlook this step, you could work really hard, but not see the progress that you want. And a lot of people are able to 
accept and value and feel good about themselves, but only after something happens. Only after they're able to accomplish what they want to accomplish. If they're struggling, if you're struggling with unwanted sexual behavior, watching pornography, whatever it may be, you might feel that you, you have to delay your, your, your self-love until you get things in order. You get your life under control. Today we're talking about starting with love. Let's start with um, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, verse 70. Allah says after, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقُنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقُنَا تَفْضِيلًا Allah says that we have honored the children of Adam, carried them on land and sea, given them for sustenance things good and pure, and conferred on them special favors above a great part of our creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints a beautiful picture of the honor that He has given to us as human beings. And even though maybe a lot of people that are watching this show um, are coming from a place where there's some darkness in their life, there's a cloud of sin um, that, that, that they've fallen into you know, time and time again. Even with that, it would be appropriate even for such a person to read this verse, despite their struggle, and be able to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored me and ennobled me as a human being. I'm part of this creation that Allah is talking about in this verse. Now with this verse in mind, let's take a look at where a lot of the people who are watching this video probably come from, which is that place of sin, right? And I know that falling into the same sin over and over again tends to place a dark cloud over your life. And life can get very dark indeed. And not only do you become distant from those important loved ones in your life, like your, your family, right? That those relationships can begin to suffer. But there's another very important relationship that can also be affected. And that is your relationship with yourself. Your relationship with Yourself. So as you're watching this video, as you're here with me, my question to you is, how is your relationship with yourself? If you're like many people who are struggling, then you probably find it hard to trust yourself, to love yourself, to value yourself, especially when you make a mistake again, especially when you make so many promises and commitments about how you're going to change your life, but then you fall yet again. A lot of people can be really harsh with themselves at that moment, and they may think things like, man, I'm, I'm such an idiot. Right? Or man, you know, I'm, I'm just worthless. Right? Now this voice, I mean, think about it. Have, have you heard that voice within you? Whether, you, whether it's when you mess up, make a mistake, or anything else, right? have you heard that voice within you? And if you have, then listen on, because we're going to talk about how um, it's going to be important to, to, to challenge that voice, inshallah ta'ala. And again, I want to welcome everybody um, to, to our second episode of Kickstart Your Recovery. Um, if you joined in a little bit late, don't worry, you can catch the notes, you can catch the replay. Um, at our blog, we'll post a link. You'll have access to that, and so just tune in, hang tight, and tune in. We're talking about starting with love. Now, this voice that we were just talking about, you may, you may, you may have found within you, the voice that says, "I'm worthless," or "I'm stupid for messing up, for not knowing the answer, for not being able to achieve the things that I want to achieve." Have you ever questioned that voice? 
Have you ever challenged it? Have you ever stood up and said, hold on, this can't be true. I, I, I can't right, look at myself in this way and devalue myself in this way. Even though I'm having a hard time and messing up, I'm still worthy and valuable and honored. And the fact of the matter is, many people spend years never challenging or questioning this harsh, abusive voice. Instead, they take this voice within them and they assume it to be true. And the common assumption people have is that I can feel good about myself when I behave in the proper way. Or when I stop this behavior. Only then can I feel good enough, valuable, and worthy. So this is where a lot of people come from. That voice is just there, you know, spending so much time and they don't really get the opportunity to ask, hold on, you know, and question that voice. But my question to you is, what if loving, honoring, valuing yourself actually came first? What if it didn't have to wait until anything happened? Again, a lot of people, they're, they're, they're willing to feel good about themselves, but they've set up conditions. This has to happen. This has to happen. This has to happen. I have to live up to these expectations. Then I'll feel good about myself. But what if it didn't have to wait until anything happened? What if you were enough just the way you are? And I want to let you know that it might sound like, oh, this is great, fluffy, you know, flowery stuff. It sounds good, nice to talk about. But I want to let you know this isn't just nice to talk about. After seeing the you know, experience of so many members in the Purifier Gaze community, right, I, can say, I can say with confidence that this is foundational. This isn't just nice, this is foundational if you want to heal and make lasting change, right? It's, it's, it's important in any realm of growth in life, but specifically when we're talking about healing from unwanted sexual behaviors, this is important and foundational. And many people have conditional self-worth. They believe that I will be worthy when I accomplish something worthwhile. But what I want us to focus on and practice, inshallah ta'ala, is unconditional self-worth. And let me break this down exactly what does this mean, unconditional self-worth. It is when you acknowledge that your inherent worth is a beautiful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you acknowledge that inherent worth that's there within you, first, without any conditions of when and if, then you will be in an excellent place to grow and to heal. When you acknowledge your inherent worth, you embrace it, you recognize it, then you'll be in an excellent place to actually change and heal and grow. So what does it matter? Why does it matter so much? If you have conditional self-worth versus unconditional self-worth. To answer that, let me share one member's reflection. A sister who was a member of the Purifier Gaze program, she reflects, she says, At the start of recovery, I was self-abusing, albeit emotionally, criticizing myself, hating myself, internally punishing myself. I thought that was good for me. Self-care taught me to be kind to myself and forgive myself and love the parts of me that I'm otherwise ashamed of. I began to realize that yes, self-care is tidying your room and going out with friends, but it's what's on the inside that's most important. Do you torture yourself inside or are you kind and gentle and loving with yourself? That had a real impact on me. Her experience, the experience of this member is not entirely unique by any means. In fact, Many of our members experience a moment when they realize, man, I've been really harsh on myself all this time. 
and they learn for the first time how to be gentle and kind and compassionate with themselves and this proves to be a turning point in their recovery journey. And I want to remind everybody, in episode one, we talked about the journey of recovery, right? The journey of recovery. And in this episode, we're setting the stage for embarking on this journey with a foundation of self-love. So if you missed that episode, I do encourage you to go back and check it out because they're all going to build on top of each other. All right. Now, the reason why so many members experience this type of transformation is that addiction, addictive, any addictive cycle, it's born in a place of self-abuse, where you treat yourself with harshness. And as a sister says, a lot of people think this is good for them, and they assume that you know, it's part of being pious and humble. I mean, have you ever experienced that yourself, where you know you made a mistake, and then you assume that the proper response is for you to be harsh on yourself or to beat yourself up. I mean, it doesn't even take any thought, right? You just, you just kind of do it, right? Um, but we have to realize that if this is the mentality, an attitude where the addiction was born, then you cannot possibly hope to solve the problem using the same attitude that gave birth to it. It just doesn't work, right? And so it becomes necessary to transcend this way of thinking, this conditional self-worth, and start to explore, well, if I don't derive my self-worth from my accomplishments, as a lot of people do when they don't really know any better, then from what do I derive it? And answering that question is what will open the door to learning how to honor yourself in a way that's more aligned with the truth, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, that we have honored the children of Adam. I want to pause and say and acknowledge that this idea of talking about self-love may seem selfish or irrelevant, may seem strange, narcissistic, and it can be tempting for you as you're kind of maybe watching the first couple of minutes of this, thinking, man, this is really weird, I, I, I don't feel you know, good about this, or this guy is some kind of nut job, or whatever. But I want to encourage you. I want you to hear me out before you go and you say, ah, this is not for me. I want to explain to you why I believe that this is so foundational, a foundational discussion for someone who's struggling with a compulsive sexual behavior, like watching pornography, or any other number of sexual behaviors. To, answer, to, to talk about that, I'll, I'll you know, give you the example of, you know, uh, we all understand that exchanging love with other people, loving one another, that's something we can all understand. Right? We can all relate to that. And we understand the importance of that. And we even see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us you know, in very beautiful ways in the Qur'an to be loving and kind with one another. So when you see this talk you know, about exchanging love with others, it might be tempting to think, that you know, talking about self-love is irrelevant. But here is why it's important. I want to give you an example of someone who has not developed a healthy level of self-worth. This person, if, you know, just I also think about this in terms of your own life. This person could receive all of the love in the world from family, from friends, from the community. Imagine that this person just recently graduated from high school. I mean, think about your experience, any big occasion that you had, graduation, whatever it is, and you might have received a lot of love and congratulations, people celebrating you about your hard work. I mean, have you experienced something like that? I mean, most people have. Now, when you think about that experience, have you ever had a time when, even despite all the love you're receiving, you still go to bed that night and you still feel uneasy. You feel still feel anxious, and you feel like you cannot join and enjoy the celebration that people are having. Right? You still you still can't take it all in. Have you, can you relate to that? And and why is that? Right? Why is that 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 happens? And you know to go further. When others show you love, you know, kind of like what we just described, have you ever found yourself asking, you know, if only 
they knew who I really am. If only they knew what I did last night. If only they knew the real me, then they wouldn't be showing me this love. You might, you might have experienced thoughts like that. I mean, have you? And so, you may block out the fact that they are, find you, that they find you worthy, and they, you know, they express their love to you. Why? Because it's inconsistent with how you see yourself, with how you value and honor yourself. So you assume they must be wrong. Right? So speaking about exchanging love with others becomes less relevant when you have not developed a healthy level of self-love, self-worth. Right? Exchanging love with others, that's stage two. But today we're talking about stage one, which is how you relate to your own self. One member shares the transformation he experienced when he finally embraced his true worth. This is what he shares. After 11 years of never truly or honestly feeling these things at my core, I finally came to see that I am worthy, I am lovable, I am deserving, and I am enough. Thank you, Ustaz Ziad. I finally know that the love, respect, and admiration that I receive from the numerous people around me in my life is authentic and real. They are not pretending. There is love all around me. I am immersed and drowning in it. I'm immersed and drowning in it. And they, truly do, and they truly do see me as someone special in their life. It's not something that I have to convince myself of anymore. I just know that it's true now. All the signs, facts, and evidences lead me to this one truth. And I am kind of uh, messing around with the, with the computer a little bit to make sure that I'm able to see the, uh, the, the comments and the likes and things coming, coming in. So I do encourage you, engage with me so I feel like, you know, there's people out there uh, and they'll make it more engaging and more fun for us, inshallah. Okay, so even though this discussion is, may not be popular, this discussion about self-love, it's relevant for us here because many of those who are struggling remain hungry, not because love is not present in their lives, but because they have not learned to value themselves. And this hunger fuels and feeds the compulsive behaviors. This habit of being excessively harsh with yourself has to stop. It has to stop if you hope to experience lasting change. So let's talk about why many people cannot stop. Right? A lot of people, they just can't. Even if they try, they would experience these three major obstacles if they try to you know, value and love themselves more, right? And now, as I go over these three obstacles, I'm going to explain them, inshallah ta'ala. You'll see that these truly are serious considerations that people may have when they're trying to be more loving and kind of them. These are major obstacles that could come in the way. So let's get into them, inshallah ta'ala. One reason people treat themselves more harshly than they should is that they may genuinely believe it's the right thing to do. And that they might also believe that it's the only way that they can change their behavior. They might think things like, if I'm enough as I am, if I'm worthy, if I'm lovable as I am, then why would I want to change? Right? Everything is fine, right? Yeah, I, I've got so many sins and imperfections, but hey, everything is fine. I'm worthy, I'm lovable, so why, do I want to, why would I want to change, right? And so, you know, they might think that the very reason for change is because, you know, they're not worthy, because they're not enough the way that they are. So they assume that they have to um, feel, uh, they have to be harsh with themselves in order to change. Before addressing this obstacle, let me explain the other two major obstacles to being more kind and gentle with yourself. The second one is that people feel like it's wrong for them to feel good about themselves when they've made a terrible mistake. Have you ever been there? Right? Or when they've hurt someone? You made a mistake, right? And so, you know, how, you might think, how could I be happy, right, when I did something so terrible? How could I feel worthy and loved when I hurt someone that I love? Have you ever found yourself 
in that situation. And so you end up being harsh with yourself as a result of that. What's the third obstacle? The third obstacle to feeling worthy and valuable, it's a significant one as well, is that those people close to you in your life may not really express love or value or worth to you on a consistent basis. In fact, they may do just the opposite. They may sometimes treat you with disrespect. right? And it doesn't need to be words. Right? It can just be facial expressions. It can just be gestures that say to you, you know, you're not worthy, or you're not enough, or you need to change in order for you to be lovable, or I don't really love you. It doesn't have to be words. But people can express these things using their facial expressions and their attitudes. And so we might come to think, especially if we're you know, falling short in so many ways and we're not living up to the you know, life and the aspirations that we want to live, we might think, man, you know, they must be right, right. They think I'm not worthy, I'm not loved, I'm not honored. They must be right. They must be right. So these are three serious, serious considerations you may have that cause you to feel like you should be harsh on yourself and beat yourself up. However, let's look at the flip side. I'm going to share with you five reasons. I'm excited to share these reasons with you. Stay tuned, listen closely, inshallah ta'ala. These are the five reasons why starting with self-love and self-compassion makes the most sense and will lead to the best results despite these three obstacles that I just mentioned, inshallah. And after I explain these, inshallah, it'll all come together and make sense, right? inshallah ta'ala. So, okay, number one, reason number one why starting with love, always start with love is the way to go. When you practice the laws of love, you empower yourself to live the laws of life. When you practice the laws of love, you empower yourself to live the laws of life. Let's break this down. What are the laws of love? The laws of love are that love comes first. Love is the foundation. Love cannot be withdrawn based on someone's performance. And love should be unconditional. Okay? What are the laws of life? The laws of life are integrity, sincerity, honesty, modesty, hard work. These are things that we don't need any convincing to know that these are valuable things. Our heart is attached to these things. We want to live up to these ideals, right? Nobody needs to force us to want to live up to these things. At their core, in their nature, human beings, us as human beings, we want these things. We aspire towards these beautiful characteristics. Why is it now that starting with love empowers you to better live the laws of life that I just talked about. The reason for that, and I think this is quite profound, but the reason for that is that because without love, you are emotionally starved of a basic human need. You are trying to operate without your basic human needs met. Right? give an example. Uh, what is this like? It's, it's like being without food and water. It's like being without food and water, without love. Imagine if a parent wanted to discipline their child who just made a mess. Right? The child broke the vase and it fell to the floor and shattered into a thousand pieces. This two-year-old kid. So the parents are like, you know what, Tommy, <laughs> You're not, you're not going to get any food. You're not going to get any water for three days. You're just, you know, you're going to starve. I'm going to starve you in order to teach you to not to do that again. Right? Of course, we understand this example. We realize that being humane, right? You, 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 can't, you can't take away a basic need of the child in order to discipline the child, right? And, and I did see a, a question come up, and I'm so happy to see that from uh, Farhad, so thank you for posting that. And um, I'm going to get to that, inshallah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that, um, inshallah ta'ala, towards, towards the end. 
And if, if you have any, anybody else has questions, please do go ahead and post them. Again, thank you so much for, for engaging there. And um, I really like your question. Isn't God's love conditional? Life is a test and we have to perform to achieve success. So that is what the most of us Muslims believe about God. How are we supposed to think differently about people? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. And I think that goes to the core of the question. So let's, let's, um, let's explore that a little bit. Let's explore that a little bit as we talk about the rest of the reasons here in Shalatana. Okay. Um, all right. So, so yeah. So the, uh, the parent, you know, uh, starving, uh, starving the child. But the thing is, a lot of people do that to themselves when it comes to valuing and honoring themselves. People starve themselves of love thinking that it will help them to behave differently. Just as a parent, you know, it's an unnatural thing to starve a child. It's unnatural to starve yourself of your basic human need, right? Thinking that will help you to behave differently. So when you start with love, even when you feel like you don't deserve it, even when you feel ashamed and guilty, when you start with love, you allow your heart to feel at ease once again, and then and only then will you have the emotional strength to live the laws of life, to act with honesty, with integrity, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again, to accept responsibility for your actions, and finally to learn from your mistakes and to grow. When you inject love into the cycle of addiction, you break the cycle. You break the cycle. Reason number two why starting with self-love is the way to go and helps you to achieve lasting change. Reason number two is that self-abuse as a strategy is a failed strategy, right? Now, let me explain this one. In your experience, you know, how many times have you been in that cycle? You've indulged in the cycle of turning to your old habits and afterwards, just kind of automatically, without thinking about it, you find yourself being harsh on yourself, right? Unleashing the self-hate and the shame and talking to yourself about how you're unworthy, right? If you think about it, it's kind of old news. It's like, you know, it's like you can predict the pattern, you know, make a mistake, you know, be harsh on yourself and, you know, unleash, you know, that shame and things like, it's kind of old news. It's happened over and over again. But people do it because they're genuine. They think that it's going to help them to change. My question to you is, has it helped you change in the long term? Has it helped you change in the long term? If you think about it, you probably find it doesn't, it doesn't work long term. It doesn't work long term. And it actually fuels the addictive cycle. On the other hand, love is like a fire extinguisher to any destructive behavior. When you feel the urge to indulge, if you dump a bunch of love on that fire, that temptation, you'll find that the fire of temptation be extinguished and smothered. It'll be extinguished and smothered. Okay, reason number three. Why to start with love? For reason number three, we ask the question, what is your intention? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that all actions are by intention. No matter what you do, there is a reason behind why you do it. And if you practice a healthy level of genuinely caring for yourself, wanting to see yourself grow and flourish, this will be a strong foundation for you, all, for you to do all that you do with a sincere genuine intention. I mean, think about it. When you care to see yourself grow and succeed, now as you're going about your day, you're going to school, you're going to work, you're interacting with family, you're having breakfast, whatever it is, taking out the garbage, right? Whatever it is, right? When you care to see yourself grow, then that intention will infuse itself into the things that you do and you have a strong, solid foundation to base your actions off of. However, if instead, you devalue yourself and you talk to yourself in a harsh way, then my question is, what intention have you set yourself up for? If you devalue yourself, then what intention have you set yourself up for? 
Now, to explain this, if you don't have a deep sense of honor for yourself, you'll probably still go to work, still go to school, you know, still work hard to meet your deadlines, still interact with your families, still brush your teeth, right? You still do these things that are, that are fairly routine. You do them kind of, like, kind of like a machine, right? Still working hard and laboring. But the question is, why? If you have not valued, if you do not genuinely care for yourself, and you don't establish that as the foundation, as the first thing, then why is the labor taking place? And if you really think about it, you'll probably find that it's because, well, it's just what I'm supposed to be doing. It's just what I'm supposed to be doing. This is just you know, what the, the expectations that are upon me, and I'm just fulfilling the expectation. I'm just doing what I should, right? But there's not that foundation of self-love, and you're not connected to it with your heart. And the problem with this is that when you do something because it's an expectation, but you're not connected to it with your heart, then this is breeding ground for resentment, right? Doing things with resentment, feeling like, you know, man, I, I, I just, you know, I, I got to do this, but, but I don't really feel good about it. Um, I don't really feel good about it. And so that resentment building up increases the chances of relapsing once again, and it's not a strong intention to build your life off of. So when you start with love and genuine care, everything you do, inshallah ta'ala, you'll be able to do it with a sincere intention. Let's move on to reason number four, and then reason number five, inshallah ta'ala, and then um, I will have an action item for you um, that will help you implement this, inshallah ta'ala. Reason number four, why starting with love is the way to go, is that, you cannot argue with the truth. And a lot of people, when in, in order to meet the objective of you know, being harsh on the, themselves like they think they're supposed to do, sometimes they'll ignore the truth. They'll overlook the truth, right? There may be things in their life that they can be grateful for and happy about and celebrate, but they'll throw all that out the window in order to achieve this objective of being very harsh on themselves. Let me remind you of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. He says that we have honored the children of Adam. So anytime you find yourself right, feeling the need to put yourself down, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we have honored the children of Adam. You can't take that away from yourself. You cannot take that away from yourself. You are an honored creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And beautifully, the first thing that Allah mentions after He says that He's honored the children of Adam is that He has carried them on land and on sea. I want to share with you the experience that I've been having. You know, a couple times I find myself, you know, driving and um, I just kind, of, just kind of stop and think about what's going on and how, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just being carried. I'm just being carried through the city, buildings on my left, trees on my right, you know, going on the road 40, 50 miles per hour, and I'm just being carried. And I reflect on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is carrying me, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in this very verse. He talks about, um, after mentioning he's honored the children of Adam, that we carry them on land and on sea. So a lot of people might think, man, what's the big deal? It's just a car. Everybody drives cars, right? Everybody rides in cars. What's the big deal? But if you really connect to the reality and the truth of the matter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can, you, can, you can find evidence and proof once again, right, of, of the nobility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you as a human being, just in the, in the way that He's carrying you, you know, you're riding in your car, even the bus, even a bike, whatever, right, even if you, you know, somewhere, you live somewhere where you're able to ride horses, great, <laughs> um, you can see that, you can see the honor that Allah subhanahu wa has given you there. All right, let's go to number five here, okay. It can be tempting to think that you know, this is selfish and narcissistic and you know, we don't really need to focus on this. But realize that the more that you honor the sacred within yourself, the more you're able to honor the sacred within other people. And the more that you abuse your own self, the more likely you are to abuse 
other people. The more likely you are to abuse other people. So this is not just about you and you know just having a complete you know self love you know festival, <laughs> something like that. This is about the people around you as well, right? The people who deserve to receive your love and admiration, respect, and and honor, right? This is about them as well. So these are the five reasons why unconditional self worth makes more sense, is more effective in achieving. Lasting change, inshallah. I just want to touch upon um, what uh, Farhad mentioned in the question. Really great question, and he says, you know, isn't God's love conditional? And you know, to touch upon that a little bit, what I what I want to emphasize is that the purpose of this entire discussion is to come to a place of balance. Right? The purpose of this entire discussion is not to take somebody who's very self abusive and then put them all the way over here where. You know, they're, they're arrogant and they don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they don't respect the laws. They don't respect that they have to, you know, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have to do certain things, right? And they have to aspire and things like that. The purpose is not to take you to the wrong side of the, the balance, right? The purpose is to take you from this place where you've gone to the extreme of being self, you know, self you know, abusive. And a lot of people struggling come from this place. That's why we're talking about it. And put you back into this place of balance. The place of balance, right? I mean, if, if you were over here, we'd be having a different discussion, <laughs> right? So I don't want anybody to, to misunderstand this and think that, you know, we want to uh, go to a place where, where we transgress our slavehood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where ultimately He judges us and He chooses the amount of love that He shows to us, right? But the, 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 the focus is going to that place of balance. Going to that place of balance. Inshallah ta'ala. So I hope that helps. Um, now how is this all done? How can you change something that is so deeply rooted within you? How can you learn to value yourself more? To love and honor yourself more? Especially when there's not something you learn how to do growing up. The answer is practice. Thank you for that. <laughs> so this point five was great. Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you for chiming in with that. Should be point one. That's true. Alhamdulillah, is, it is a very important one as well. But the answer is okay, how do you do this? The answer is practice. The answer is practice. You will face resistance when you try to treat yourself with greater kindness and compassion. You will face resistance. It will be difficult to say no when that oppressive voice within you says you're worthless. Right? It's going to be hard to say no. No, especially when that voice has been there for years. But the good news is that it becomes easier with practice and eventually it becomes second nature. So you can get started in child practicing for just one day using the Commit to Happiness exercise. Let me share this exercise with you before you log off, inshallah ta'ala. And you know, we'll be here for a couple minutes, inshallah ta'ala. I really like this exercise because you don't have to set aside any time to do it, you just go about your day like you normally do. So here's what this exercise is all about. To help you go to that place of balanced, healthy, I, I use the word healthy, right? Self-acceptance, self-appreciation, self-compassion, self-love. Get to that place of healthy self-love, inshallah ta'ala. Here's what you do. Today you make a commitment that tomorrow is going to be a day of happiness. Tomorrow, you're going to give yourself permission to be happy for the whole day. It doesn't matter what happens today or tomorrow. You're committed to giving yourself permission to be happy. Okay? Now, you can wake up tomorrow and be like, Oh yeah, uh, you know, I, I committed to allowing myself to be happy today. Okay, you know, let's give it a shot. Bismillah. Right? Let me try to be happy. When you find a lot of resistance, not if, but when you find a lot of resistance as you practice this, then you need to get creative. You need to get creative and start looking for evidence. When a voice inside of you says, but, but, you know, I made this mistake yesterday. I've got this thing that I'm worried about, this thing that I'm afraid of, right? I shouldn't be happy right now. <laughs> when the voice says that, you may need to search for a reason to allow yourself to be happy. What can you feel good about? What can you celebrate? What can you be grateful for? Get creative. 
Get, you made a commitment. Keep your commitment, all right? Don't, you know, just, just uh, that, that voice is going to come, but you have to get creative and always go back to that place. It's all right. It's going to come over and over throughout the day. It's going to come over and over. But just remember, I made a commitment to be happy today. How can I do that? How can I accomplish that? Right? Just keep on going back to that place. Inshallah ta'ala, I am going to do this challenge. Inshallah ta'ala, I, I'm, I'm committing to do this tomorrow. Inshallah is going to be my uh, commit to happiness day. And I want to see if anybody who's, who's here on the video with us, you know, willing to go ahead and make that commitment to do this tomorrow, to get back to that place of balance, self-acceptance, self-love. So you can also share more of your love and appreciation and kindness with people around you. You have a strong foundation to build your growth off of, right? And you'll start to experience lasting change. You'll start to experience lasting change. While you're going about to your day, you know, just kind of observe your inter internal reactions. You know, you'll probably find a lot of resistance at first, but once you give yourself permission to be happy, you know, a couple times you begin to see, hey, you know, nothing uh, nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened. You know, uh, I was very hesitant, but hey, you know, it actually turned. It actually feels kind of nice, <laughs> right? It actually feels kind of nice. Then you've just gotten one step closer to having a healthy level of self acceptance and self love. So this episode has been all about how love is the foundation of your healing and growth. And my parting advice to you is that you must honor the honorable within you. You must value the valuable within you and respect the sacred within you. This is what many people struggling with addictive behaviors have not learned how to do. And this is what will help you to start to break the shackles of the addictive cycle, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Alhamdulillah, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts uh, from us and allows us to benefit um, from, from this discussion. As always, go to purifyyourgaze.com slash kickstart. You can catch the replay, you can catch the notes, you can catch previous episodes down there. Again, the purpose of this is to share inspiration and, and, and you know, some of the foundational tips and advice that are helpful for people who are struggling. So if you can think of somebody who can benefit from this, please do share it with them, inshallah. I'll see you next time for our next power tip, which is all about living without the mask. And many people struggling have a hard time being honest and open with people. So next time we'll learn about how starting to remove the mask will accelerate your healing big time, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.